recording. <laughs> I'd like to introduce to you um, a lady who I've had great privilege to meet, who's the uh, owner and uh, grower of this uh, fabulous orchard here. I'd uh, like to get you now just to introduce yourself, Mara. Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Margaret McAdam. Um, this is my little orchard that I run myself. Uh, my main crop is, is figs, brown turkey figs. I've been growing them for about 25 years. Um, this is coming towards the end of the season now, so the trees look a bit scrappy. But um, I grow them with uh, no spray, uh, other than copper, um, to try and keep the rust away, which is a problem we have here in subtropical Queensland. Um, but apart from that, um, they're all grown pretty much organically. The fruit is just beautiful. I can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> and the trees are just bountiful. They're just laden with fruit. Uh, and of course, figs are um, very good for you. Um, I, I guess I started growing them because as a, as a young girl, I lived in my um, grandparents' fig tree. Climbed it every day and got the fruit from the top of the tree and fell in love with it. So that's where I've ended up here with my own little orchard, uh, which I love doing. And, and um, I was grateful when I was speaking to uh, Margaret regards this is that she also introduced me to um, the, the uh, ability of um, mulberry leaves um, to be used as a food source as well as the, as the, um, um, as well as the fruit. Do you want to explain a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'd also, um, I'd also loved mulberries. The reason I like figs is they're a beautiful fruit that you can just pick off the tree and eat. And the same applies in my to mulberries. They're just beautiful. You pick them off the tree and they're luscious. Um, so there was that um, side of it with the growing of the trees. And I had some really good um, uh, genre um, fruit from my parents' old farm. The fruit was always lovely. Uh, but then I did a bit of research on the internet and um, discovered the um, amazing amount of use, uh, particularly in India and China, where they grow the um, majority of the world's supply. Um, they've been using them for centuries for um, all sorts of things. Um, food, um, medicine, stock feed. So I'm sort of just trying to encourage people to um, have a look at this side of them and um, see the benefits of them. And I can testify to the fact that um, they they don't, um, uh, it's not one of those superfoods or some ridiculous thing like that, it's just added as a greens, it's got um, a full range of uh, um, good nutrients in it. It is known as a um, uh, a great aid to um, diabetes 2 sufferers. There is results that you've seen from people who um, have taken their insulin levels right down by using um, mm. uh, mulberry leaves. Yes, that's on the internet. There's, there's mm. a lot of research being done at the moment, I believe, with that. Yeah. Um, mm. But I, I use them for, um, for cooking, um, using them as dolmades, um, using just wrapping the, the rice and meat or whatever, vegetarian, just wrapping them in the leaves and just um, uh, poaching them gently. Sort of like a, um, I'm only encouraging Margaret at the moment about raw food. See, she. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Russell only eats raw food. I, I still like cooked food. <laughs> but anyhow, that's a use that, that, that I have on them. I just think they're beautiful. They're just yeah. 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 So, uh, and then there's a the beautiful fruit as well, which is just to die for. area, uh, place called yes. Ankle Kabulcha. Um, now, as you see, we're finished products, some beautiful figs, uh, all is available down here um, at the right seasons. Yep. Okay. Um, and uh, look at that. Yummo, <laughs> yummo. Okay, so quickly, what we're going to go through is um, the state of the agriculture shall we say here in, in the in the world at the moment is heavily dependent on petroleum based um, uh, farming techniques what can we do as communities around us to, to address this issue now what I 
really enjoy about Margaret here is that she's got this wonderful farm going. She's got um, a mountain development pressing on her to um, to close it all in. Now, what people don't realize, now we, we must have um, development and housing, we understand that, but there has to be some sort of compromise between where we grow our own food, uh, the, the community structure within it. You can't just go destroy things just for the sake of putting up a house without thinking about the total consequences. Now, um, why don't you let Margaret have a bit of a chat. Um, one thing we were talking about before is people don't understand things, little things like the role of bees, Margaret. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's, there's, there's been a, a problem over in America um, for a few years um, with the disease amongst the bees. Um, I believe some of, they've actually imported some of our Australian bees. These are the, the European bees, the, what we generally know as the honey bees. Um, but I understand that, that the uh, problem is now hitting Australia a little bit. I'm not 100% sure on that, but that's um, what I've heard. And uh, a lot of things haven't actually um, fruited this year from just what people coming to me and talking and uh, whether it's the, the lack of the bees around. Um, but what I've got here in my, my property, we've kept um, the virtually the, the native bush, the virgin bush as it is, we, we, I do a little bit of integrated, what you call integrated farming. I've got my little plot, then I've got all the bush, we have so many animals, so many creatures, and amongst that is the, is the little native bees, the trigonas, um, and which by the way love the figs, they're all around here, um, they seem to love the resin in the, in the figs. Um, Try and give you a bit of a photograph of the nest a bit later. I'm yeah, so. yeah. Um, but there's quite a lot of those little nests around, um, and they're always out there buzzing around, you know, pollinating things. And um, it's it's so important. I don't think people realise without these little creatures pollinating things, um, we wouldn't have flowers. And if we haven't got the flowers, we haven't then got the fruit or the vegetables um, or the grasses. Ev everything that we eat basically comes back to being needed to be pollinated by these little creatures so you know it's all a, it's all a cycle um, and I think you know, if we if we destroy what we've got we're, we're destroying that some part of that cycle and and that's and, and that's what doesn't get taken into consideration when development just goes carte blanche and takes down everything just for an apparent need for accommodation mm. and, and unfortunately yeah. the money the dollar as well. So what we're, what we're trying to do here is that Margaret has other spaces in this area and what, we were, what we're looking to do is try and develop a community garden in here, uh, like a sh work on a share type um, uh, aspect where uh, we get a, an area started and we grow for, um, vegetables again yeah. just on a co-op basis. So, that's basically what we're going to do in our community, see if that can work. And by that, um, have a bit more um, awareness in the, in the community of what needs to be kept. Development isn't the, the great guide to, to have to bow to. So um, that's what we're going to be doing. This is what we're doing in our community. So probably what we're, going to, what we're saying here is ask yourself what you can do in your community. How, you know, yeah. what you can put out um, to make the awareness of that this is one planet, one people, yep. and we really need to um, work together. Um, and at this present time where we're looking at it, the state of the economy is that it is, there's going to be big shake-ups. And the biggest thing that turns people into unpleasant people, I mean, there's many, but one mm. is hunger. Mm. Food. You mm. try and get food from some place. Mm. So um, anyway, that's the message that we've got here. Um, I'd like to thank Margaret for, for spending pleasure, the time pleasure, with us and uh, we'll keep you posted on, on how it all goes and uh, again just um, the message out to you guys, what can you do in your community for the advancement and uh, shall we say maintenance and preservation of your, your heritage of, of your good water, of uh, foods that you can eat without having to have some petroleum based yep. product uh, yep. to keep them alive. Yep. Okay then. Well, we'll catch you later. Bye. Cheers.